last video for this lecture outline. So woohoo! Uh, now there's a little bit we have to know about phase diagrams. First off, they describe different states and state changes that occur at various temperature and pressure conditions. We've got pressure on the y-axis here. We've got temperature on the x-axis. And that will always be true. What will also typically be true is that for whatever it is, the axes are not necessarily to scale. Um, and this is a phase diagram of water. And uh, they'll almost always look like this. There'll be a series of lines. There'll be solid, liquid, and gas phases. What you can see is that the gas phase exists at high temperature, low pressure. and that the solid phase exists at uh, high pressure and low, uh, well, I guess it, it exists at low temperature and a variety of pressures as well, and that liquid is somewhere in between. Now, there's a couple other interesting things that we need to know about this. That is that line A, this line right here, that is the solid to gas phase transition. Okay. And that it occurs at a range of pressures and temperatures. There is also this B is the same thing for solid to liquid. and C for liquid to gas. So, and those are phase or state transitions. There are two other points on this. One is point D. Point D is what's called the triple point. It is the one combination of temperature and pressure at which solid, liquid, and gas, triple phases, uh, solid, liquid, and gas coexist. Okay. Um, and then point E up here, that's the critical point. Okay. And at higher temperatures and pressures than uh, the critical point, so at higher temperatures and pressures than this point, H2O is what's called a supercritical fluid. And supercritical fluids, not too important to us right now. It's good to know that they exist. Uh, they are useful in certain circumstances. But we need to know all five of these points. And we need to know a couple other things. I'll go green this time. At a pressure of one atmosphere, if you were to go from zero Kelvin to... Uh, high temperature, so you're tracing temperature at one atmospheres, this is going to be the heating curve. For water that we've just done in the previous lecture outline. Okay. And it will show that as temperature changes, it takes energy to do it. Then there's a line where you have a phase transition, no temperature change, but it does take energy. Then a liquid phase, then a phase transition, then a gas phase. The other thing that's interesting about this is that the slope of the solid to liquid transition is negative. 
meaning that this line is negative slope as opposed to a positive slope. Water is almost the only substance we know of that has a negative slope here. What this means is that if you're at 273 uh, degrees, uh, 273 Kelvin, and you are in at a low pressure, that if you increase pressure, you will turn it from a solid to a liquid. And in fact, this is related to the fact that the solid phase of H2O is less dense than the liquid phase of H2O. which is why ice floats. Which is amazing. It's one of the very few substances that, ha that for which that happens. And we can attribute it to the fact that in the liquid phase, around zero degrees Celsius, the water molecules can actually get closer to maximize their hydrogen bonding. That as you get to lower temperatures, right around zero degrees Celsius only, the H2O molecules move slightly farther apart to maximize their hydrogen bonding. Moving farther apart means less dense H2O molecules. So the slope of this line being negative is related to why ice floats. And ice floats because hydrogen bonding is maximized by moving the water molecules slightly farther apart when it freezes into the solid phase. So that's what's interesting about, uh, but almost every other substance, this line is positive. We'll show you an example of that right now. So here's water's phase diagram. Here's the phase diagram for carbon dioxide. Same kind of line here, same liquid gas line, although we don't extend it quite as far to get uh, to the triple point. Slope of this line is positive. Which means the solid is more dense than the liquid. Which is how it happens for 99.9999% of materials, not water. All right, so uh, we're comparing it to the phase diagram for CO2. We can see that one atmosphere is down here. So if we were to do the heating curve for CO2, it would go straight from the solid to gas phase. It will only cross the solid to gas phase, and that's why CO2 sublimes. However, if we wanted to do CO2 at um, higher pressures, we could get it to go from solid to liquid to gas. Uh, the other thing is uh, supercritical carbon dioxide is a material that gets used in, quite often as an extracting agent. Um, it can, it's uh, actually not that hard to make 73 atmospheres, and this temperature is just a little above uh, room temperature. Room temperature would be 298. And so you can make supercritical carbon dioxide. It is a great solvent for dry cleaning. It's a great solvent for extracting uh, essential oils as well. And a lot of essential oils are done that way. It's relatively low temperature, so uh, you don't need the high temperatures uh, that can destroy the essential oils. You also don't need solvents like organic solvents uh, that people worry about too. Now, a couple questions we can get about supercritical fluids. One is, based on the temperature pressure combination, where are we? What phases exist? Let's run through a couple of examples here. So 293 Kelvin would be somewhere in here. 70 atmospheres, go up to 70 atmospheres, will be somewhere around right there. That'll be in the liquid phase. 216.6, 5.2, 
that's going to be point D, which is the triple point. Question though says what phases exist? It would be solid, liquid, and gas, page 2 out. Two eighty three, one atmosphere, one atmosphere, two eighty three is going to be in the gas phase, etc. etc. I'll leave the last two for you to do. Another question we can ask you for, uh, and we'll do CO2 here draw heating curves for the following pressures. What you do is you basically start at zero Kelvin, you work your way up, any lines you cross our phase transition. We've already done this at one atmosphere. Let's do it for one atmosphere again. So, oop. For heating curves, temperature is on the y-axis. Heat added is on the x-axis. We're going to have solid phase heating. Then a phase transition, so solid, solid to liquid, I, uh, sorry, solid to gas, and then gas. And then if we repeat this process at 10 atmospheres, or let's just say somewhere around here, we will get a solid to liquid and a liquid to gas transition. You don't need any other numbers on these. We are just sketching them out. And what I'm looking for here is for you to label every phase. Label every phase transition. Um, and if I give you the temperatures, um, let's see. So we could do temperature here. Uh, I may ask you to include some temperatures as well. Um, and that ends lecture outline 11.